Week two of ProQuest season rapidly approaches and it's a brand new meta. So let's talk about some decks that you need to keep your eyes out for and know how to play into this week. Starting with the deck that I think should be on literally everyone's mind, and that's Azalea. Look, here's the thing. Brody Spurlock has proved that this deck and this specific construction of this deck is probably one of the top two decks to beat. Uh, it's this and KO. I mean, you can argue amongst yourself. I honestly lean more towards this compared to KO. This is a deck that you must respect and target if you choose to, or have a game plan into if you don't choose to target it. Uh, and it is a deck that really goes crazy if left unfettered and unchecked. Again, this is the list that uh, Brody shared on the video. So if you haven't watched the video, go check that out. Also, by the way, the Patreon uh, link in the description is to a deck list that we're looking at plus the sideboard that I created. I put it together based on everything he said. Um, and so you have access to that as a patron. Uh, but I put that together uh, myself so that you could maybe throw it out there and have a sort of a start point to run and iterate off of. So feel free to use that as you see fit or mess around with it uh, if you are a patron and have access to that. Nevertheless, um, the list here is uh, free to take a look at. I've put it in the link in the description as well. Uh, and it is all gas, no breaks. I mean, most of the arrows are zero cost, a whole bunch of pumps. If you look at the breakdown, there are 30 non-attack action cards, 27 attack action cards. Of the 30 non-attacks, um, you're really only looking at Nox as not a pump, technically still not a pump, uh, and Codex of Frailty as the other non-pump. And those are, those are it. That coupled with Rain Razors, are your only non-pump cards. Everything else is a pump or an arrow, and it is looking to just push massive amounts of damage, sometimes dominated, oftentimes with terrifying on hits. This deck is one of the best in the formats, and again, requires you to have an answer for it. If you don't have a hero that can answer it or can combat its damage, uh, or just kind of play around its damage, then you're gonna have a bad time. So Azalea is the number one deck in my mind going into week two of ProQuest season. If you're looking for a place to buy singles and other cards to build the decks that you're about to see, look no further than MinMax Games. They sponsor the channel. They are fantastic in this community. They love flesh and blood. They love you. Trust me, I know. They told me. I heard it. It was it was very kind what they said about you. They're really, really nice people. So go support them using the link in the description, and we would all appreciate you for it. Next up, of course, as I mentioned at the beginning, is none other than KO. KO has continually shown, even with Dromai in the meta, that he is a deck to beat, if not the deck to beat. If you don't believe it's Azalea, it's probably KO. He sets the math just on the table and makes you do something about it. I'm gonna show you Daniel Correas' list from Pro Tour LA. Of course, this uh, overall list can change in a variety of ways. In fact, I wanna shout out uh, Joel Repta's list, which is completely different in a lot of uh, respects and also was featured on Arsenal Pass. I believe they did a spot on uh, this deck as well. So you should check that out as well. Link in the description. But uh, Daniel's list has a lot of the bones that a lot of these other lists are running. It's mid-range aggressive. It's probably the best way to call it. Uh, it runs a lot of the cards you would expect to see. It runs Bear Fangs in the main board, but it has Pulping in the sideboard, if you're curious as to where that is. It's got the Wild Rides as well, which is just classic, if you will. Uh, but then it runs the Clash. This is the version of the deck that runs Clash, uh, both yellows and reds, uh, and that is looking to play a more blocking strategy if available to you. But you have your All-Stars, your Blood Rush Bellows, your Sinned Packings. Uh, this one is playing three copies of Cast Bones. Some players are starting to move off of Cast Bones to play a more measured approach. In fact, I think Joel's list, yeah, only has two uh, Cast Bones in it. So that is something to keep in mind as well. When you sit down against KO this weekend, you could be up against a version of this deck that is a little bit different than what you might expect. It may just not be a full slam down aggro list. It may be something that threads the line a little bit into that sort of control fatigue uh, side of things. It's not going to be fatigue, but it has to have some answers into fatigue because as we'll talk about here in a moment, fatigue is starting to make a return. Nevertheless, this is a solid, solid list to start with, and it has great options in the sideboard to go really wide and really big with something like a Savage Beatdown. 
Fantastic card, by the way. Off of the discard of an Agile Windup, Savage Beatdown is literally just a three discard and uh, like 12 damage, 13 damage with a Might, that sort of thing. It's pretty nuts, pretty nuts card. And this is a great list to run with. Okay, this is the third list that you probably expect, the third hero that you most likely expect, and that's Dorinthia Ironsong. After this, we've got a couple of uh, heroes you may not have on your radar yet, but Dorinthia and specifically both Hatchets and Decimator Dory, I should say, um, are both very strong right now. Very, very just potent in the meta. Again, one of those fantastic numbers decks, and this one is just incredibly efficient. Uh, off of the back of all the Blade Runners in the world and Blade Flurry, this just wants to block and send axes over and over and over again. You're going to use your Blade Runners, your hit and runs to get go again, be able to swing the axes twice. And then sometimes when you have Tunic available or maybe an extra resource from a uh, like a, a, another source going maybe you're playing like i don't know some form of vigor creation like goblet of blood run wine uh you can get a third axe swing off and those are the big turns with spo uh, spill blood because if you can spill blood into three axe swings you close that game out and that's oftentimes what you're trying to do spill blood and two axe swings or spill blood and three axe swings when your opponent is at low life totals and you just work your way down bleeding them ever so slightly and most of these lists currently are sitting on a more defensive game plan the sink belows the fate for scenes, which might be tucked in here, not more often than not, take it on the chin, it's just everywhere, because this card is super nuts, take it on the chin, fantastic. Um, your Steel Blade Shunts, some players are running more copies of Steel Blade Shunt, there are the favorites for these scenes, I was looking for those earlier. Um, some of them are running more. You no longer have to play Cleave because Dromai is now gone, which means you have more options available to kind of pivot things around, which is quite good. Also means that you can probably drop Amnesia unless you're very worried about Prism. And you have right to be very worried about Prism. There's certainly some things that you can do to it, though. This is another card that we want to talk about. Any deck that can run Warmonger's Diplomacy is probably going to start doing that now. So if you're looking to play in this ProQuest Week 2 and you're playing a hero that is soft against Warmonger's Diplomacy, keep this in mind. This card is starting to come back and any hero that can start to play it is probably going to play a few copies. I have uh, one to two copies in my Kasai list that I'm most likely bringing this weekend. Um, and I'm not necessarily looking to play them out, but if the time arises, this card can do some serious work. And so can Axis Dorinthia. So this is another one of the big three, if you will, that are doing well right now and you should expect to see. Now onto a few heroes that you should keep an eye out for because I think they're going to make a strong resurgence. And the first one is Azuri Switchblade. Why? Because she can put down on hits that cripple Azalea. Technically, they cripple just about any hero, but specifically Azalea, a hero that does not block well already and can then just get absolutely hosed by some of these on hits. For example, Leave No Witnesses is just a pure value card against Azalea. Not only that, but Codex of Frailty into Leave No Witnesses is nuts. Codex of Frailty on its own is already making all of Azalea's like on hits a little bit easier to deal with because the Frailty token is affecting arrows from Arsenal. That is quite good if you're playing against a uh, hero that always plays from Arsenal, and that is Azalea. Count this alongside of something like a Shakedown, uh, which can reveal just red, and then like you name red, reveal the hand, and just take their best red arrow or their best red pump, and you're looking very good. CNC, of course, a hell of a card that absolutely puts damage down and removes the arsenal and makes it really, really difficult for Azalea to do just about anything. All of this put together with Isolate, and uh, you, you just can't do anything against it as Azalea, and you just kind of have to hope. But, you know, Azuri can just block really well, too, depending on how you build her, which makes her such a hard out for Azalea. So I'm very curious to see if Azuri rises to prominence now that Azalea is sort of sitting on the top. She's already done well. In fact, this, by the way, I should point out, is Caleb's Battle Hardened Philadelphia winning list uh, from a few months ago. And uh, yeah, just already puts stuff down. So uh, if she's already good, I think her getting better because some of her good matchups are getting better 
bodes well for Azuri. And finally, the Guardians are rising again, perhaps finally. Victor Goldmain has been putting up some numbers back and forth, left and right, RTN season, callings, pro tours, and even at the ProQuest season, he's starting to climb. And he's not the only Guardian, also Bravo. And interestingly enough, these Guardians play slightly differently. For example, Dennis Shang here, um, third place calling LA. This is an aggressive version of of Guardian. We're playing much more aggressively. We're running things like Pummel. We're running things like Double Red March, Macho Grande. And I keep in mind, I pulled this list off of Fab TCG's website. So yes, 1AB is a little bit suspicious. I don't know. This, this could be correct though, uh, if it was punched in correctly. Nevertheless, we are looking at a very aggressive Red Line-esque list, a very like classic Guardian list, very Bravo-esque in that sense of like half reds, half blues. But Victor makes his hay and really, you know, makes his gold off of the backs of cards like Test of Strength, which winners clashes, creates a gold token, and Trounce. The value comes from cards like Trounce that get you this opportunity to win both clashes, create some gold, but even just revealing things and, uh, you know, gathering up that value of drawing a card. Because remember, if you create a gold, you draw a card, you replace yourself. And cards like Test of Strength in this meta oftentimes will do that. This is a more aggressive version of the list. Things like Zealous Belting that we're playing, even in Light and Strike, which I would say is probably a concession more often than not towards uh, like Dromai. And now that that's kind of out of the picture, maybe in Light and Strike makes the uh, cut and we see something else. But expect a more aggressive overall version of Victor. Though I will say I did play on Talishar recently, a pure fatigue Victor Goldmain list as well. And then the other side of that coin is the control Bravo, the fatigue Bravo that's creeping back. I hear rumblings and underpinnings, and I will say this, it's been a long time coming and I don't even have a list to show you for fatigue Bravo, but I do think that fatigue Bravo may poke his head back out into the meta again now that it can sort of prey on Azalea Kinda. She can dominate, but Fatigue Bravo and just Guardians in general that want to play Fatigue have the armor block. I mean, they, they have shields, for God's sake. They have the armor block all over the place, uh, and then they run just D-Reacts aplenty with unmovables, probably, that they can sideboard in. Um, sink Below's Fate for Scenes, you name it, they've got it. So Fatigue Guardian is also a thing. If you're sitting down to play in this upcoming week of ProQuest, there's a lot to think about. And I think the number one thing that you should do going into this weekend is know what your deck wants to do. What does your deck do well? Where does the value lie? And play to that. Now, of course, there are a lot of heroes that I think are very good now, many of which we've talked about right now, some of which we haven't even gotten to. But know what your deck does and how it does it into these different heroes, into your Guardians, into your Azuris, into your Azaleas and your KOs. Know what your deck wants to do and how to best play into those matchups, and you're gonna have a good time. You may not win every game. It's a card game. It happens. But if you know how your deck works and you know what it plays into, you're gonna be more successful than not. So go out there, win a couple games, celebrate with your friends, maybe open a black envelope, and let me know how it goes in the comments. If you enjoyed this type of video, make the number go slightly higher, join the Patreon so that we can maybe one day get the dream of full-time content creation a thing. I don't know, that could be really cool. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.